Welcome to my Nutrition 101 class where I break down nutrition, making it super simple, just under 10 minutes. Because we all know that social media makes it seem like it's a foreign language. Carbs are bad. Fats are bad. You shouldn't eat after 7 p.m. It's so frustrating as a dietitian seeing this every day on my feed. So I decided to make a course for those who want to understand evidence-based nutrition and just run away from all that noise. So we're just going to jump right into it. Today, we're going to talk about my favorite, carbohydrates. So what's actually a carbohydrate? I know you're probably thinking bread, pasta, rice, but it's a lot more than those foods. I'm going to get a little sciencey on you guys, but this information is just really important to understand. So carbohydrates are a type of macronutrient found in food that gives our body energy. Our body then breaks down carbohydrates into glucose. Your body then absorbs glucose and uses it as energy to fuel your body. Glucose is our body's preferred source of energy. I repeat, glucose is our body's preferred source of energy. Carbs come from different sources. Let's start with sugar. What's the first thing that comes into your mind when I say sugar? Was it white table sugar? Well, you're not wrong. This type of carbohydrate is called sucrose, which gets broken down into glucose, our body's preferred source of energy. Another type of sugar is called fructose, which is known as our fruit sugar. Did you know that milk is a sugar? Lactose is a sugar in milk. Our bodies use an enzyme to break it down, which is called lactase. But those who are lactose intolerant don't produce enough lactase, so that's why they get that crampish, uncomfortable feeling. And then we have our starches, which are called complex carbohydrates. These are made of simple sugars strung together. This includes our breads, pasta, cereals, our starchy vegetables, including our corn, potatoes, squash. This also breaks down into glucose. So what do all these carbohydrates have in common? They break down into glucose, our body's preferred source of energy. So is the sugar coming from fruit healthier than the sugar coming from white table sugar? There's no difference in the sugar itself your body processes it the same way. I think this is why people compare a banana to a Snickers bar, which triggers me. I don't know if you've seen this video where people say that bananas are unhealthy because they have just as much sugar as a Snicker bar. <laughs> Does a Snickers bar have fiber, vitamins, minerals, antioxidants? No, they're completely different. Sugar is glucose. Glucose is energy. So if they rephrase it to eating banana will give you just as much energy as eating a Snickers bar. It sounds a little bit better. However, after eating a Snickers bar, your blood sugar is going to spike up and then come right back down, giving you that crash, making you feel tired, sluggish. Eating a banana will give you stable energy levels because it contains fiber. Speaking of fiber, fiber is actually a complex carbohydrate. It has a fancy word called cellulose. It makes up the walls and plant cells, giving it its structure. However, our bodies cannot digest cellulose. It aids in digestion and it promotes gut health, which is very important in our diet. Okay, enough science talk stuff. I wanna to touch base on the grain group because I know diet culture gives it such a bad reputation. I'm starting to notice though, it's fading away, which makes me so happy, but I just might be on the good side of TikTok. I don't know what's on the bad side. Um, so comment below and let me know what you see. But grain products are a key source of carbohydrates, our body's preferred source of energy. They also have a lot of B vitamins, which help cells produce energy. It's important to make at least half of your grains whole grains. Let me show you why. We're gonna do a little whole grain anatomy 101, my favorite. Okay, so we got the bran, which contains all the dietary fiber, the antioxidants, and the B vitamins. And then we have the germ, which contains essential fats, B vitamins, vitamin E, and then trace minerals. And then that middle part is called the endosperm, which is the main carbohydrate component of a whole grain. That's what really gives you the energy. So when whole grains get processed to refined grains, Basically, the bran and the germ get stripped out, just leaving the endosperm, which is the carbohydrate component of the whole grain. And there is nothing wrong with refined grains. The endosperm is great because it gives you that energy. But of course, when you're going from a whole grain to a refined grain, you're missing all of the dietary fiber, vitamins, minerals, B vitamins, vitamin E, essential fats. There's a lot in there. Whole grains is also great for weight management because all that fiber keeps you feeling full longer. It gives you sustained energy levels so you don't have that crash and then you wanna just binge on snacks. So the main takeaway is try to make half of your grains whole grains. Here are my five tips I follow when it comes to grains. Number one, just try to replace refined grains with whole grains whenever you can. For example, I eat brown rice instead of white rice. 
Really, I don't think there's that much of a difference in taste, maybe a little bit of texture, but that's just because of the fiber. However, it doesn't work with all products. For me, as an Italian, I do not like whole wheat pasta. I definitely like refined pasta, and that's okay. Just do whatever works for you, but just kind of be cautious on what maybe you can replace with a whole grain instead of refined grain. See what works for you. Number two, check the ingredients list. In order for a food product to be a whole grain, the first word has to either say whole grain or whole wheat. So it can say whole wheat flour, that's a whole grain. If it says refined wheat, it's not a whole grain. If the word whole grain or whole wheat is second on the ingredients list, it's technically not a whole grain. Number three, check the nutrition label to see if it's an excellent source of fiber. An excellent source has a daily value percentage of 20 or more. Number four, when you choose refined grains, try to add fiber to your meal. For an example, like I said, I love refined pasta but I try to add some vegetables into the pasta, giving it more fiber. Cause that's gonna slow the absorption of glucose into my bloodstream, giving me sustainable energy levels. And number five, try at least one whole grain you're not familiar with. For an example, farro, quinoa, couscous, buckwheat. They're all so super simple to prepare. And to be honest, they all taste pretty similar. So expand your horizons. Okay, I don't wanna overload you with nutrition, so this will be my stopping point. See, very quick and simple. I'll be posting a nutrition education video every week, so if you follow along, you'll become a nutrition expert by the end of this. So be sure to subscribe and follow along. I'll see you guys next week.